Hello there, my very good friends. Andy Murray here for What Culture Wrestling, and today we are going to be talking about the brand new WWE video game. I am, of course, talking about WWE 2K Battlegrounds, a copy of which was very kindly provided by the lovely folks over at 2K for the purpose of this review. So, 2K Battlegrounds came out, it was released to the world on Friday, the 18th of September. And I think even if you've only seen a couple of screenshots or a wee sliver of footage here and there, you can tell immediately that this is a very different style of game to what you might be used to. I'm not going to prattle on and on and on about the nightmarish launch of WWE 2K20, but you know, after putting in the hours, after working through the various game modes and making some real progress, I can safely say that 2K Battlegrounds is completely different to 2K20 in every single sense, whether positive or negative. Let's break that down. So let's get the basics out of the way first. You have a core pool of about 75 to 80 wrestlers here. You've got some legends from the past. You've got some guys who aren't there anymore, Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson. Hope they're getting a nice payday. You've got stars of today, and you've also got a pool of custom-made characters for the campaign mode. Your Bolo, Reynolds, and other interestingly named dudes and dudettes. Uh, it's an interesting talent pool. Jake the Snake Roberts is there, and he's in AEW at the moment, so... You know, a few interesting oversights here and there, but most of your favourites, rest assured, are going to be in the game. You just might have to unlock some of them. Now, as far as game modes go, you've got basic exhibition. Stipulation matches is relatively limited. You've got a cage match and a Royal Rumble, but not a whole lot else. Um, other game modes, you've got an online tournament mode, which is kind of like a ladder system. You win a match, you move on, you work your way towards various rewards at various tiers. There's King of Battleground mode, which is kind of like a never ending battle royale there's four wrestlers in the ring four more waiting on the outside it's online again you eliminate as many people as possible the pool of wrestlers waiting to come in on the outside is constantly replenished and the further you get the more people you eliminate the bigger your prize you've also got the battleground challenge which is kind of similar to the campaign and the tournament mode it's like a series of matches and various other bits and pieces you have with your created character who starts at a base overall level of 60 very low, but will surely be a lot higher as you work your way through this mode and collect the upgrades. However, the biggest selling point in these games is often the campaign mode, and that is 2K Battlegrounds bread and butter. It's a very simple story. It's uh, Paul Heyman pitching Vince McMahon over a rather weird looking plate of chips that he wants to start a brand new brand for WWE, collecting new wrestlers from around the world and having them face off in their respective environments. He enlists Stone Cold Steve Austin as his talent scout and recruiter and that's how your story begins. Your first character is a fella named Bolo Reynolds, interesting name, who earns his contract by bumping into Steve Austin on his bicycle in the street. He then ends up wrestling Baron Corbin in the New York City underground and you know straight away that this isn't your father's WWE game, this is something very different indeed. You advance through this story, it's told via comic book panels, it's quite nicely done. In fact, it's a little bit cheesy at points, but the presentation is really, really cool. You advance out in New York, you go to the Performance Center, you go to Florida, where Steve Austin picks up an alligator wrestler. There's all kinds of wacky stuff here, but we'll get to that in a minute. So the visual style and the overall presentation of this game is kind of nuts. It's very different to what you might be expecting. The character models look a bit like Funko Pops, uh, with massive hands and massive feet, uh, to complement their massive heads, of course. It's an interesting approach, and I would say as a whole, despite a few wonky character models, I mean, look at the state of The Miz here, for goodness sake, despite those, it's cool. It's very appealing, it's very bright, it's very vibrant. It is a completely fresh lick of paint from 2K20 and indeed the 2K games that came before. I like it, man. It's uh, not going to be to everyone's taste, but it's a unique aesthetic. And if you don't want to make things look hyper-realistic, which wouldn't make sense in the context of this game, you might as well nail something interesting. And as far as interesting goes, well, this game is bloody wild. You would have seen it in the early footage. Guys getting uppercutted into the sky, fists on fire, dudes getting thrown and eaten by crocodiles, motorbikes used as weapons, all of that stuff is here. And most of your matches won't go down in a conventional wrestling arena. There is a Raw arena, 
But, I mean, that's not all that interesting, is it? When you can fight dudes in the middle of a swamp and throw them to the gators and so forth. This is nuts. It is a crazy game. It is wild, it is out of control. It is not at all concerned with realism. So if you want a cage match where you have to win by collecting loads of money and climbing up a cage that might electrocute you, this is the place to come. And I have to say that all of this is a lot of fun. This kind of stripped down, bare bones fun factor is the game's main selling point. It's crazy, it's over the top. It's trying to capture the appeal of a game like WWE All-Stars. So playing through it, I would say that its main appeal is probably, if you're an adult, right, it's gonna be as a party game. You get your mates over, you have a few drinks, you have a few snacks, and you just have a laugh beating each other up because it's very, very simple. It's very straightforward, you can master this very quickly. Uh, there are constant prompts on the screen hinting at you to what to do if you ever get stuck. There's a very easy to follow tutorial system as part of the campaign. You will pick this up in no time. So if you want to just have a laugh with a big group of you, you could burn hours of this at a time. It's also probably a really great game to play if you're a parent and you want a cool game for your kids. Uh, they're not going to be, you know, totally perplexed by outlandish, complicated grappling systems and weird counter methods. Every mechanic in this game is very straightforward. But while that's going to appeal to some consumers, it may drive others away. I say this because this isn't the kind of game that if you're just playing on your own, you're not necessarily going to sit on your couch and play for hours and hours just lost in the world. Everything is kind of repetitive. Uh, even in campaign mode, you will find constant instances where you're wrestling the same person over and over again to make these advancements. In terms of the overall gameplay, the in-match gameplay, this is reflected there as well. You can literally win a match if you want just by spamming punches uh, and then hitting a pin particularly early on. You don't necessarily need to work through your power-ups, uh, your finishers, your signature moves. It creates a thing like a kind of sense that you're just grinding and that's going to be a core theme later on when we talk about one of the game's biggest problems. If you're down with that kind of thing and you feel subs like suitably rewarded by what you're unlocking, you're going to have a good time with this. But, you know, if you want a bit more variety, a bit more nuance, then I don't know necessarily that this game is for you. There's also an extreme sense of repetition in terms of movesets. Uh, there's various different styles of wrestler, high flyer, technician, powerhouse, brawler, all these different bits and bobs. And... Two wrestlers from the style basically wrestle the exact same way. There's very little variety in the movesets. Wrestlers don't feel like they're real life equivalents aside from a couple of finishers here and there. And while that's to be expected when you have a stripped down game, you're not going to be able to capture every single intricacy of a, a man or a woman's style between the ropes. But I don't necessarily think that Jake the Snake Roberts should always be wrestling like Bray Wyatt. It's a bit weird, and if you're looking for that level of authenticity in terms of wrestling, you're not going to find it here. This is pure arcade, pure simplicity, and yeah, it's repetitive. Unfortunately, this lack of depth also sifts through into the creation suite. Now, making your own dudes and dudettes is always a big highlight of these games. You want to make your mates and beat them up. It's loads of fun. It's one of the big appeals of these games. But the creation suite is very limited. If you're creating your own wrestler, particularly at the start, you have a very limited pool of parts to choose from. So it's very, very difficult to put your own stamp on these little Funko dudes and dudettes as you're creating them. You unlock more as you go, but at the start, it's very limited. You also only have five slots lots to start with, you have to unlock more. If you're looking for in-depth customization, it's not the right place for that, unfortunately. And the create a battleground mode is even more limited at the start. Basically, you want a wrestling arena with just different colored lights and stuff around the ring? Okay, that's, that's about all you're getting. You're not going to come into this thing and create the kind of wild alligator swamps that you get that you unlock through gameplay. So bear that in mind if you want creativity and the ability to put your own stamp on the game. If that's a selling point to you, well, it's not quite there. And much of this game revolves around unlockables. Uh, you want to unlock that wrestler? Well, you're going to have to grind through some matches. You want to unlock creation parts, uh, moves, specific environments and everything. You're going to have to play through campaign and other game modes and earn virtual currency until you have enough to splash out. Some things are unlocked just as standard through the various game modes, but wrestlers in particular are unlocked through the virtual currency. On average, you're going to have to work about four or five matches until you have enough of this virtual currency. They're called bucks in the game. There's actually two different types of them. 
four or five different matches before you can unlock even a lower level wrestler like a Lindsay Dorado. If you want Triple H or whoever the heck else, you're gonna have to work even longer. This goes for alternative attires as well. Every wrestler has three different looks. You get the first one as standard when you unlock the wrestler, but if you want more, currency. And of course, virtual currency means microtransactions. And this is a topic that has been done obviously hundreds of times before across hundreds of different videos, so I'm not going to dwell on it too much, but not just being a pay to win kind of game, 2K Battlegrounds at times feels like a pay to do literally anything kind of game. The grind is deliberately slow, they want to nudge you towards forking out real cash so that you don't have to spend hours and hours working towards getting that special Triple H attire you've wanted. And I get it, man. Some people are going to find that grind satisfying. Other people are going to go, you know what? I'm going to get the credit card out and I'm going to flesh this game out and have all my favorites. And it's kind of confusing to me personally because I feel like this game is marketed towards children. It's bright, it's colorful, it's fun, it's simple, it's easy to understand. And yet, yet, you have these microtransactions and you're nudged towards them, like I say, something doesn't quite add up there. You are indeed a slave to the grind in 2K Battlegrounds, and that's an issue. It's going to drive people away for sure. Um, I felt it at certain points as well that I just wanted to unlock these wrestlers without having to go and wrestle, I don't know, 10, 20 matches to have a fuller roster. And it goes for creation parts and points and everything else you can think of. They are everywhere. The virtual currency system dominates everything in this game. And if you're the type of person who is turned off by that and driven away by games that feature it, you're not gonna enjoy that aspect at all. I would keep that in mind when you're weighing up whether or not you wanna purchase 2K Battlegrounds. You know, it's a shame as well because this could have been so much fun if the, the progression system was a little more rewarding and a little less grindy. For me, the way this is structured undermines all of that. And it's a real shame. They could have had something awesome on their hands here. And in the end, it's kind of just a grind farm. So overall then, to summarize, yes, WWE 2K Battlegrounds has its problems. The microtransactions are gross. It's uh, repetitive at points. It's very grindy. Uh, the lack of variety across the board, aside from visual environments and different other bits and pieces, is disappointing. But there's a lot of fun to be had here, man. If you just want a light-hearted uh, game that you don't have to spend hours and hours learning loads of complex systems, if you just want to dive in, blast away while you're listening to a podcast, maybe doing something else at the same time, you're going to have fun with this. It has its place for sure. And I think particularly if you are a younger gamer or if you have uh, younger gamers in your family, you can put this on. You're going to have a good time. It's going to be a great party game for when the world goes back to normal and you're actually allowed people in your house. Uh, you're going to have a lot of fun to it. And credit where it's due as well to 2K. They recognized that 2K20 did not go down well. They've shifted in the complete opposite direction. And I think if Battlegrounds is gonna become a series of its own, there's something here they can build on. They can take this foundation, add little bits and pieces as we go. And maybe next year, if they roll with this again, come out with a fuller, more satisfying product. That being said, I think it's a good game on the whole. I've had my fun with it. I will be going back to it on my lunch break at work today and probably after work as well just have a blast and cut loose and have some fun with some fire fists and electronic cages punching the air. You can't actually punch the alligator. That would be very cruel. And, you know, go to Gatorland or something, donate money, don't be cruel to alligators. I've been Andy for What Culture Wrestling. I'm giving this game three stars on the whole. I enjoyed it. Let me know what you think, however. Hit the comment section. You can like, you can share, you can subscribe, you can follow us on Twitter at What Culture WWE and myself at Andy H. Murray, where you can tell me how wrong I am about 2K Battlegrounds. Goodbye.